Okay, so the next step is to create a couch. First thing I want to do is, of course, go to the internet and do a little research and development, find something that looks like it could be made with Rhino. Um, what I'm going to do is this one right here. It's pretty simple shape-wise. The only thing that's really complicated is the tufting, and we're just not going to do the tufting. Um, the way you would do the tufting is you could do it in a different program. You could do it in Fusion 360 and then export it as a step file. And if I show you, uh, Fusion 360 allows you to manipulate and sculpt in um, what I think is a, a much more uh, naturalistic kind of way. Um, so you could actually make multiple sections and then grab components and uh, modify the form, pushing things in to make them tufted. If I push that in like that, and then you can go and modify form here. Oh, wait, I gotta go OK modify form and if I crease you know certain sections you see it starts to make little folds and stuff like that I mean I, I can go into another tutorial on how to play with it um, in Fusion 360 uh, later but I, I just think that you know can you Getting to know one program well is is uh, tough enough. So let's just pretend like it's kind of basic flat geometry. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and look at the sizing. They do give you sizing information on the uh, couch project here. So I've got 88 inches left to right, 26 inches tall there, and then on section height I've got all this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and actually just draw the side first. Uh, so 19 inches is indicating where the seat is. I got 27 inches to the floor. I'd probably figure this is about 4 inches, just kind of guessing uh, based on standard heights. So 4 inches underneath there for where the legs are. So let me go ahead and start drawing the side profile of it. I'm going to uh, turn my layers all off just so I'm going to start working on that layer and turn all these off just to get them out of my way. Okay, and I'm going to go to a uh, front view and Start by drawing a rectangle at zero and bring it out 20. What was it? I'm already forgetting. 27 inches by 38 inches. 27, 38. And I drew it the wrong way, so I've got to rotate it, and I'll R O rotate, click on it, enter, do my endpoint there, click, and move it that way. Then move from this point where to zero, enter. Okay, turn my gumball off. Um, all right, so that's the profile. Now I'm going to middle mouse click and explode. Delete this. Actually, I'm sorry. Undo that. Let me switch actually my views. This purple is just driving me nuts. So I'm going to make the color of my couch layer black. There. Easier to see. Offset this line, this direction, 3, enter, click, it's too low, delete, offset, this, this way, how about, we'll just do 4, enter, click, okay, then I'm going to trim, TR, trim, click on this, enter, click this, click this, enter, 
Okay. I'm going to leave that. I know that's four inches. I'm just going to keep that in mind. Um, so delete that. Okay, so I'm going to do the base of it as well. Just trying to draw kind of the outline. Imagine um, this part right here is just what looks like about a four inch uh, rectangle that does go front to back. So I'm just going to offset this again four inches. This, this way, four. Enter, click. And that's just kind of a guideline. So I'm going to draw a rectangle from here to there. Click, select the straight line curve, and delete. That way I've got a rectangle there. And if I join these together, middle click, join, I've got a rectangle there. So these are going to be the two shapes that I extrude out. Um, then the last shape that I want to extrude out uh, to make the seat component, I'm just going to make it um, a piece from here that comes in kind of diagonally because uh, they, they typically have a little incline for, uh, for comfort. You don't want a straight up and down um, sofa. So you can see that there's an angle for the pillow right there. So we're going to go ahead and do an angle there too. On the, for the back. So I'm going to draw a line, or I'm sorry, polyline from here, this direction. Let me uh, turn on ortho, ortho is on. Four, enter, click, and then I want to set um, an angle. So I'm going to turn ortho off. I'll just do it perpendicular and then hit enter. do that again. So line from here, this direction four, polyline. From here, four, enter, click, and then to here, click, and then two over, click, and then back up to here, click. Click on it, right click, or center click, mouse wheel, explode. Click this, delete, and then trim from here to there. Okay. And then I've got curve from here to here I want to um, trace this from here to here to here here and then choose that curve delete choose this one delete so now I've got that shape all one piece and that shape all one piece working together. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go into my three-dimensional view. I'm going to extrude this curve, uh, what looks like maybe about six inches, enter. And then I'm going to move this from, click on this point, to this point, okay, 
And then I'm just going to draw a line from, uh, from this edge here straight across 88 inches. And that's the overall length on our couch, 88 inches. So I'm going to MI mirror, enter this object, enter from the midpoint right here. Now let's turn ortho back on, locked in, click, OK. And then I'm going to extrude this curve and click on that spot. So you can see I've already got the couch frame, and now all I need is the basic pillows for the couch. So pillow on the back, and pillow on the front here. Um, let's look back at our couch. It's this long pillow here, and then we've got two pillows here, and then these circular pillows. Another reason why I chose this one is, is the armrests are super easy. So let's go ahead and round some edges, make some stuff look a little bit better here first. So I'm going to center mouse click, um, invert selection and hide objects to get just this piece by itself. And then I'm going to fillet the edge here, 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 and here at 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Uh, let me just do that again. Always got to enter the radius first and then select. It's different than it is in AutoCAD, so sometimes I get a little confused. I'm kind of taking a risk by trying to do all of this at once because if one of them fails they all fail but I'm reasonably confident that if I grab all the right angles it should work enter enter okay that seemed to work all right and then metal uh, middle mouse click and show objects now I'm going to click on these two, middle mouse click, and I shift clicked in order to grab that other one, and invert and hide. And then I'm going to fillet the edges around this the same way. Really could have done that before mirroring all this because it's uh, taking twice the clicks. If I would have done it first and then mirrored it, we would only had to do it once. Okay, so that gives us that shape there. Let's uh, middle mouse click, and show my objects. Okay, so I got that frame. Now I'm going to create the rectangle on my surface here and make sure it's lined up right there, right there, extrude, curve up, four inches again. And that's going to make my cushion. And so now I'm going to click on this uh, middle mouse click, visibility, invert, and hide, and then fillet the edges of this. 
actually, um, there's another thing we could do if we so were so inclined. Um, I could draw a mesh from a primitive box and just uh, kind of trace over this. And then if I click on the extrusion, delete it. If I let's change my visual style to wireframe so you can kind of see. A mesh has multiple objects on it like that. Um, when you create a mesh, you can um, change the number or the refinement of the of the surfaces. I believe. Let's see under mesh. Split edges. Um, yeah, I don't remember exactly. It's refine makes more of them, uh, weld makes fewer faces. But either way, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to smooth. Uh, and you can enter a sm smooth factor. Maybe I'll do two. You got to be careful because you can mess it up by. Uh, see, I did it wrong. Smooth. And then if I look at it and. Shaded. You can see it starts to look a little bit more like a cushion, but that's meshes, and I really don't like them very much in uh, these CAD programs. Um, they're harder to control um, than in Fusion 360, which is, I guess, also a CAD program, but it works a little different. So I'm just going to go back to my box and fillet it. I'm actually going to fillet it with a bigger radius. That's good enough for me. Um, then let's bring back show the show objects. All right, so then last thing I want to do is uh, make that back cushion. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. Actually, I'm going to use a polyline. And actually, let's go back to the. beginning shape here. Let's see if I can grab a hold of that. There we go. So we just have this so that's the angle and we know we've got a four inch cushion on top of it so let's um, middle click explode this so we've got multiple shapes here uh, go to a right view or front view sorry offset this one four inches still looks good um, and then what is the overall height 
minus that. So let's see. So we've got 34 inches to the top there. 34 inches minus 27 inches is um, 7 inches. So that extends 7 inches above. Um, so if I offset this, oops, offset 7 inches, this, oh, I said 7. There we go. And then extend to here this object. That is where the top of our cushion is going to be. So if I extend this to here, let's go like that. That's the bottom. So offset this four inches. Now we've got all of the sides we need. We can just extend that to there, and then trim, or just draw a polyline from here to here to there, all the way around. And then I can just delete out all of these other unnecessaries. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my render view, visibility, show my objects, and extrude this to there. Actually, that's too, too far. Let me undo. And draw a line, the midpoint. So we want to just extrude this to there. So we use our snaps to lock on. All right, and I'm going to just mirror that over, but. We learned their lesson. We're going to fillet everything first. So let's uh, middle click, invert selection. And you know, I'm going to change the visual style so it looks a little better so I can see what I'm working with here. So fillet, edge. Oops. Fillet, edge, enter. Radius is already at one. That's good for me. And I'm just going to do these flat sections. Maybe leave the uh, corners and see what that does. Might look good. And then enter. Yeah, so it gives it a little sharper corners. And then experiment, I'm just experimenting. Let's see if I can, nah. I might like it better. That's too rounded. Just do one.
mirror it from our midpoint. Turn my ortho on. Delete all those lines I used to make stuff. All right, now I'm going to go to a right view. I'm going to draw a circle with a diameter of what, six inches? No. A diameter of eight inches. Okay. And then go back to my view here. Move this extrude. Just gonna mirror this all the way over from center to there. And then let's move them. Actually, I'll use the gumball and then just kind of push it this way and a little bit back in space too. Go ahead and figure out where to just cut this off by copying, um, make all this one piece here with Boolean, solid tools, Boolean. Type it Boolean union. Okay. It's all one piece. So now I can copy from this corner back to that corner and then subtract. I'm going to keep this and this. Right. Boolean subtract. So that and that, enter, subtract out that, enter.
Well, let's just do this. Start over. <laughs> All right, so let's go right view, circle. Diameter, eight, enter. Render view, move. Right there, extrude. Right there. Move down. Oh, we got this still selected. Move down. A little more. Fillet edge. Fillet edge. There it is. Okay. Click. Maybe two. Enter. Mirror. I know that was only one, but so what? Enter. Okay. Last thing we want to do is put it on legs. So. Let's go to a front view and then draw, uh, actually first top view and then let's draw um, a rectangle from one edge here to there. Hide those. And then move this rectangle to click on that corner, zero, enter. Okay. So now it's on the ground. It wasn't on the ground a second ago. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and delete that. Any other unnecessary lines. And I'm going to use this rectangular shape. Um, as a guide, click here, explode, and then I'm going to offset this this way, four, this this way. Let me double check just to kind of get a visual. Uh, maybe it's more like six, six inches all the way in. Offset six and just hitting enter to re bring up that same command. And then I'm going to draw a circle right here with a diameter of one, and then I'm going to draw another one with a diameter. Two. And let's look at them. Are they straight? Are they curved? What do we got? It. Oh, those are super simple. Just straight up. Okay. So then we'll go to a right view. Uh, let's 
let's move the seaplane. Set seaplane to world right. Okay. And then I'm going to move this. And what that does is now it allows me to um, control things a little bit better. For so uh, control vertical movement. So if the seaplane is the or or um, the direction of the grid. So click on this, move from this point up four inches. Enter. Click to get out, escape, turn off the gumball, it irritates me. <laughs> and then I'm going to loft, new tool, L-O-F-T, I want to loft this, and this, enter. And then enter one more time, normal, loft, enter, okay. And the next thing I want to do is uh, go to solid uh, cap planar holes and that closes it off so it's all a solid object. Next thing to do is copy from this center midpoint to there, to there, and there. Enter. And then I can delete all of these lines. And then left to right to delete around there. Okay. Right click, set C plane, world top, middle mouse click, visibility show objects. And you can see we've got a basic couch. Next step is to um, make sure it's all on the same layer. So let's go to um, our layer properties. And we've got the couch all on that layer right there. Uh, let's turn back on all our other layers. And I'm going to use the group tool, hit group. I've got everything selected. I'm going to group all that together. What that does is that makes it all one piece so I can move it around easier. But leaves everything separate so that when I'm rendering, I can still um, render it properly. And I'm going to move it from this point right onto this corner here. So I know it's on the floor. And then I'm going to go to a top view and I'm going to move it the rest of the way. So I'll go MOVE, enter. And then I'm going to click over here to the left and drag up to there. And then hit enter again, click, and move it forward a little bit in space. Okay. You know what? I'm going to flip these two objects. mirror them click delete okay and the reason why I did that I, I just want I think I'm gonna put like a television set or something over here have the windows behind the couch it might be better for lighting so let's go to my render view so I'm gonna put like a television or something on this wall here a little end table here um, and continue making this work. So let's go to a shaded so we can see our colors. So we've got all our layers set up with different uh, colors. And you can always ungroup by just typing ungroup. Um, but I'll move forward with uh, a carpet and television and a table next. <laughs> 